It's locked, all right.
It's locked. Good evening, sir. May I have your attention, please? Come on, Johnny. Don't you recognize your oldest friend? Clarence. Clarence Crossley. How are you? My God. So you survived the war, too. So sorry I didn't recognize you at first. I almost didn't recognize you, either. War does that to men, I heard. In my case, it was true, for... I witnessed the horror that lies underneath. When did you escape the war and return to London? You know what's funny? I almost never think about the war. Not anymore. I'm involved in another kind of battle now. 
I know what you mean. I haven't had much time to think about the war either since my return. Of course. With the epidemic, I bet you've been busy as well. Forgive me, Johnny. I, I didn't want to sound selfish. What is this new battle? Well, I saw terrible things during the war. Horrors I thought I'd forget. They're here too. They're everywhere. Vampires. How is your wife, Venus? We've spent so much time away from each other. And so many things have happened. But you're alive. You returned in one piece, and you have a family. How many soldiers can say the same? Believe me, it's not quite that simple. Unlike you, I'm not the man I used to be. Is everything all right at home? Surely Venus was relieved to see you return from France in one piece. Have you forgot what people are like in this part of town, Johnny? Venus fears for our family reputation. Now her husband has become the village idiot. You need some rest, Clarence. You should try to sleep. Good evening, old chap. Are you all right? I won't lie to you, Johnny. I'm not a well man. Clarence, why have you distributed leaflets about vampires all across the West End? I have to warn everybody about them. They've killed thousands of people already. Unnoticed thanks to the epidemic. We are all in danger here. Vampires in London? Come on, Clarence. Who's going to believe that? I'm not mad, Jonathan. You have to believe me. I know they are real. They're all around us, even as we speak. Clarence, you've always been a reliable and a good friend to me. If you say you saw a vampire, then I believe you. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you for your trust. You don't know what that means to me. It's all right. But if you want my help, you have to explain exactly what happened. The first time, it was in Rouen. I saw an officer drink the blood of a soldier. I saw its teeth. I saw it bite. It was a vampire, Johnny, and, and they're here too. Tell me what you have discovered about vampires, Clarence. They've always been here. And if you search for long enough, you realize others know about these devils, too. I'm not alone. Have you shared your research with anybody else? No. But I've published my leaflets all across the city, hoping that someday someone will realize I'm printing the truth. What do you mean you're not alone? Who have you met? The Guard of Prewen. The Brotherhood of St. Paul Stoll. Ichabod Throgmorton. Those names always pop up when you dig deep enough. Have you spoken with any of them? No. With the quarantine, it's almost impossible to leave the West End. But as a doctor, maybe you could, Johnny. Are you asking me to help you prove the existence of vampires, Clarence? Yes, Johnny. Please, gather all the information you can find about vampires and bring it to me. You're the only friend I have left. I need you. Clarence, tell me about the vampire you saw in France. I was enjoying my leave in Rouen. I left the bar, took a shortcut back to the barracks. I saw it in a back alley, an officer in a stained uniform, biting into a soldier's neck. But you were drunk, weren't you? Are you sure these two men were not just... 
kissing. Please don't insult me, Johnny. I hid, and I saw him leave. Then I saw the body, drained of all blood. I've seen the same marks here in London since I've returned. Did you ever see that officer again? No. Wore the uniform of the Royal Warwickshire Regiment. I did some research, but found no trace of him. He probably stole it from a previous victim. You need some rest, Clarence. You should try to sleep. Is anyone there? Jonathan, is that you? I did not know you were back in London. Oh, my dear Johnny, I am so sorry for your loss. Mary was such a sweetheart. Thank you, Venus. May I come in? I was going to bed, actually. Forgive me. With the epidemic, I tend to forget people are supposed to sleep at night. I'll tell you what. Come back tomorrow for tea. I'll be glad to see you then.
Do you know where you are standing right now? In front of the Ascalon Club, I presume. The Ascalon Club only summons or ostracizes. What is your business tonight? I received an invitation. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, then, Dr. Reed. Please proceed. Lord Redgrave is waiting on you upstairs. Welcome to the Ascalon Club. There has been quite a battle here. I'm sure the Ascalon Club has the money to replace the furniture. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, then, Dr. Reed. Good evening. My good friends, if I may have your attention. 
Behold our visitor, the good Dr. Reed. Newborn of blood so pure and strong that even my friend Fergal Bansha was no match for him. Here, here, here. Come forward, young Ekon, for we have so much to discuss. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, Dr. Reed. I am Lord Redgrave, Earl of Bristol and Chairman of this exclusive association. Lord Redgrave. At last we meet. I've been eager to make your acquaintance. I've heard some astounding things about you. Please accept my condolences for your loss, Dr. Reed. Thank you, my lord. Lady Ashbury expressed your wish to meet me. Yes. The lady has always been a useful acquaintance, though not always reliable. Is she a good friend of yours? She has proved to be helpful on many occasions. Hmm. The centuries have taught me never to trust a woman completely, especially if she is immortal. Too prone to emotions, if you ask me. Too fickle when it comes to important decisions. My lord, do not expect me to speak ill of Lady Ashbury. Of course not, and I praise your loyalty. Would you offer the same fidelity to the Empire? What do you mean? I speak of the Skull Plague that threatens London and the country. You have been on the front line in the East End. But the time has come to open up a second front here. The epidemic has escaped the quarantine. You have new cases of the outbreak. We don't know for certain. But we cannot allow the disease to threaten the prominent heads of Great Britain. Why do you suddenly need me? The Ascalon Club only recruits the best, and you definitely fit the bill. Your scientific and medical reputation alone would qualify you as a candidate. You want me to find possible sources of the outbreak in the West End? Is that it? Ah, straight to the point, like all eager newborns. We shall have time to talk about all this, Dr. Reed. But first, I should like to get to know you better. Talk? Is that the only reason you asked me here? Well, no. I also wanted to meet the intriguing Ekon who made such a powerful progeny of his sister. You have not learned the name of your maker, am I correct? No, I haven't. Have no embarrassment, Dr. Reed. We all make mistakes. But whatever your lineage, you are definitely Ascalon material. What do you mean? I would like you to become a member of the Ascalon Club, and to serve me as such. Before I accept, I have so many questions. Please ask. What is the Ascalon Club's express purpose? We follow the credo of William Marshall, the greatest knight who ever lived. As was he, we are sworn to protect the British Empire. What does Ascalon mean? Ascalon was the lance wielded by St. George, glorious patron saint of England when he slew the dragon. And like that lance, we pierce the hearts of all our nation's enemies. William Marshall founded the Ascalon Club. Not exactly. William Marshall granted me immortality, and I founded the club a few years later. The good knight has been gone for so long. What does it mean to be a member of the Ascalon Club? It means that you swear to protect the interests of the Crown, that you become a loyal servant of the British Empire. Do you have any official recognition from the government? A charter from His Majesty the King? No. Of course, the Ascalon Club publicly supports the Empire, but the true nature of its members remains a secret. Am I supposed to follow orders? As founder and chairman of the club, I alone am entitled to make demands of our members. And I do appreciate obedience. I killed Fergal, who claimed to be one of yours, sent to cleanse the East End of all Skulls. Will his death be an issue? 
do not worry. My priorities have changed. Fergal was a zealous servant of mine, but like any servant, he had his limitations and is readily replaced if necessary. I agree to join the club. This is good news. Good news indeed in these crucial times. Let's inform the assembly formally and proceed with your initiation. My initiation? Fear not. Nothing fancy nor dangerous. It is just that we, the members of Ascalon, believe that tradition and custom are the backbone of this country. My fellow members, dear friends, please gather and welcome this Ekon as one of our own. Is he worthy? Is his blood pure? Well, speak, Dr. Reed, in front of the most sacred blood. The blood of our beloved William Marshall. Speak now. Will you serve and protect the crown as he did? Yes, I will. Then, young Ekon, it is time to testify with your blood. It is time to sign the Book of Allegiance. I know it's awfully gothic and a tad pedantic, but England's traditions are the backbone of our nation. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, Dr. Reed. Take your place among the bearers of the lance. One of us! One of us! I personally went patrolling last night in the West End. That went well, did it not? It is always useful to bolster the troops' morale, especially before a difficult battle. You have the makings of a general, my lord. I was, though very long ago, well, not quite a general, but a proud defender of the crown. So why did you really want to meet me? Straight to the point again, young Ekon. All right, let's talk, you and I, Lance Bearer. I'm listening, my lord. According to my spies, you have worked with Dr. Edgar Swansea on the epidemic. And your findings were quite alarming. You were spying on me? Not personally. I rarely leave this building. But once he found you, Fergal kept me informed. Until you put an end to his mission. Who was Fergal? I don't see him sipping tea with the others in the club. Fergal Bansher was my squire of sorts. Even before becoming that magnificent beast, he was a brute. He served me well for decades. No, I mean, what was he? He was clearly no ordinary vampire. No, he was a Vulcod, all muscles and instinct. Quite the rare breed, ferociously territorial. Mortals often mistake them for werewolves. You do know I killed him. Yes. Will you bear ill will towards me for his death? Of course not. Your victory was quite impressive and courageous. You earned my respect. Do you know Edgar Swansea? Not personally, but I've been told he has some sort of immortal fetish and is a good friend of yours. Does it bother you that I consider him my good friend? As long as you reveal nothing of the club's inner workings, why should I forbid you engaging in conversation? the good Dr. Swansea. 
Yes, I'm convinced the recent invasion of frenzied scowls in London is directly linked to the epidemic. This is not the Spanish flu, but something else. I would be glad to hear more of your discoveries, Dr. Reed. But for now, my main concern is the security of London's inhabitants, both mortal and immortal. What do you mean? Alarmed by the epidemic, the guard of Prewen has started a war against us British vampires. To appease the situation, we must eradicate the Skulls. I have met peaceful and wise Skulls. To exterminate them means we are no better than vampire hunters. Skulls are hideous, shameful creatures that give all Ekon a bad name. So, what do you want me to do? I want you to investigate the city thoroughly. I have reason to fear there are cases of contagion in this part of town. Our absolute priority is to find and cleanse them. And how would you like me to proceed? By all means necessary, Dr. Reed. You are now a member of the Ascalon Club and you have carte blanche. Interrogate the locals, follow all the leads you find, and get results. Have you heard the... the horned vampire redeeming himself and singing obscure songs around the city? What is this new malevolence? Skulls have been spotted everywhere in London. We are losing this fight. I think Lord Redgrave just suggested I was sired by an ancient vampire. Hello again, Venus. Jonathan, you're still up. Can't you just knock at people's doors during the day? I'm sure you can spare me a few minutes. For old time's sake. Of course you may enter, Jonathan. I'm so sorry for your loss, Jonathan. It's a pleasure to see you again, Venus. So you return from the war in one piece, too. Thank God. My Clarence is back home, too. How is the old rascal? Probably outside, chasing ghosts and chimeras. Clarence has changed a lot since he returned from the war, you know. How have you been since the last time we met? How long has it been? Three years now? I've done my duty, like all British women. You have no idea what it was like to wait for months without knowing if I'd still be a wife or a widow. I understand. Luckily, this part of town has been saved from the worst of the bombings, from what I've seen. Yes, and it's also true about the epidemic. The flu has killed here too, of course, but not on such a large scale as in other parts of town. Have you noticed anything peculiar about the neighborhood recently? You mean except for your return to town? No. Oh, and again, Jonathan, please accept my condolences for your sister. Thank you, Venus. It was so sudden, and I've been so busy, I haven't spoken to anyone about it. 
I wish I could have assisted at the funeral, but you know, it's been so quick. And what with the epidemic in the streets? There's no need to apologize, my dear. It's normal, considering the circumstances. No, it's not. I am sure that Clarence has not even thought to present you his condolences. He is too busy with his penny dreadful stories. Why is my return so surprising? It's more an unexpected happy end than a surprise. You and Clarence, back from the war. You have no idea how hard it's been for me. Venus, why do you worry so much about your family's reputation? Everyone laughs at Clarence now. And they avoid me because they believe I share his insane opinions. I'm a leper in my own community. Tell me about Clarence's obsession with vampires. It drives me so crazy, it makes my stomach hurt. I was so relieved to have him back. But I quickly realized he'd lost his mind in France. I understand your irritation, Venus. But you have to accept the trauma Clarence endured on the battlefield. The question is simple, Jonathan. Is my husband mad? Yes or no? Do vampires exist? Or is Clarence a lunatic? So you don't believe Clarence? If poor Mary, bless her soul, had tried to convince you of the existence of bloody vampires, would you have believed her? Seriously? The important question is, what do you really think of your husband? I'm tough, Jonathan. He should have told me the horrors he witnessed, however appalling it was. Instead of inventing a fantasy about blood-drinking monsters. I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Have you noticed anything unusual? The McPhersons. I heard they locked themselves in their own house. They could just be afraid of getting sick. Perhaps you're right. But if I were you, I'd pay them a visit. A big house, reachable through a courtyard to the north of the railway bridge. Goodbye for now. I remember when Mary came here with her husband and her son. They were such a beautiful family. You survived your great hurt. I fear the worst. It's locked. No invitation is needed to enter this building. That can't be a good sign. No sign of a struggle. It seems Charlotte's friend knew the killer and let him in.
Emily wanted to become a vampire. Something must have gone wrong. Someone is responsible for this mess. But who? should follow the trail. Who are you? What are you doing here? I could ask you the same question. I'm the Marquis de bois Colombe, and I strongly invite you to find your own game, sir. I'm not here to sustain myself. I'm currently investigating the death of a young woman killed by a vampire. A young woman killed by a vampire? Oh, <laughs> you're joking, right? Oh, I do love the British sense of humor. What are you doing here? I recently decided to visit London. I've always dreamed of visiting a city on the verge of collapse. Such a delicate, yet intense spectacle. You take pleasure from others' misery. I have been a totally depraved and immoral creature since the day I was reborn, sir. And probably before. What do you plan to do here? Take pleasure. Take pictures. Enjoy the show! Have fun! Believe me, I won't be the only foreign immortal who bought a ticket to the fair! And who exactly are you? I am Jacques-Michel Guillaume Florimond, the Marquis de Bois-Colombe, at your service, my dear cousin. You're French, but your English is quite good. I was born in France, sir, but I consider myself a traveler of this world. Mmm, so many countries, so many tantalizing tastes. Dear cousin, are we related? We could be of the same blood, my dear. I tend to consider all Econs as family, don't you? I followed the trail of blood from her room to here. Oh, you're referring to that young woman. Yes, the meeting turned messy. I'm afraid I ruined my last wedding coat. So you admit you murdered her? I admit nothing, my good sir. I only regret the blood of that girl staining my clothes. Oh, blood can be so messy. What happened? She wanted to become one of us. Not the first time I have received such a proposal, but... Uh, I must admit her direct approach tempted me. And then what? The body rejected my blood. It happens, you know, sometimes even with voluntary prey. At least her gurglings brought me some fun, until the artery burst. I believe you, sir. Emily's diary confirms your statement. Oh, Emily was her name. Quite charming. Well, mystery solved then. Yes, I suppose so. You can go. And so can you. Farewell, sir. 
May you enjoy the spectacle of this fallen city as much as I do. They're all around you, waiting for you to let your guard down. Good evening, old chap. Are you all right? Well, I won't lie to you, Johnny. I'm not a well man. Do you realize you are ruining your family, Clarence? Don't you see the risk here? Money isn't important. Not important when it is a matter of life and death. That is what my dear Venus cannot understand. People will laugh at you if they don't already. Think about your wife and your position. Think about your future. I understand my wife's embarrassment, but gossips don't kill, vampires do. There'll be no future if people don't open their eyes. I can't believe I'm telling you this, but if warning people is that important to you, why not choose a more efficient way to spend your money? Don't you think I tried? I knocked at every door, went to every bank, I even tried to be published. No, Jonathan. This is a one-man war. I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Can you help me? Infection is everywhere these days. But if you ever go to the park near that swanky house belonging to... The Yes? What about the Mullanies? What about their house? Not enough noise for a big family with children. Not enough movement. Closed doors. What is going on in there? I wonder. You need some rest, Clarence. You should try to sleep. Good evening, Miss Ashbury. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. I have found out what happened to your friend, Emily. I can handle the truth. There's no need to hide the bloody details. Your friend was planning to become a vampire. She thought she'd met an honest one and made a deal with him. Unfortunately, Emily did not survive the process. My mother told me many times about the risks of being turned. And suspected she exaggerated the danger to avoid me being tempted. No, the risk is real. Have you any idea what a body has to endure to become an organism entirely consumed by its need to process and recombine blood? I should never have talked to Emily about vampires. I never thought she'd actually try it without me. <sighs> Thank you, sir. Here, take this for your discretion. I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Have you noticed anything unusual recently? A few days ago, I spotted a strange house while campaigning for women's suffrage. Awful smell. No answer when I knocked. Where is it? It's the Mullanies, a nice family who live in a big house near the park in the eastern part of this neighborhood. Goodbye, Charlotte. Give my best regards to your mother when you see her. She's been quite busy these last few nights. I suspect you may see her before me.